I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. Climate change is threatening the nation's coastal areas. The devastation of Hurricane Ian is the most recent reminder of our increasing vulnerability to extreme weather, both in terms of loss of life and loss of land. Louisiana has lost more coastline to sea than any other state, according to the Environmental Defense Fund. The state loses a football field's worth of land Every 100 minutes, the communities along the Mississippi Delta are the most vulnerable. One community, Pecan Acres, is using federal disaster funds to move to higher ground. But they won't be Louisiana's or America's first victims of climate change. Our special contributor, Joey Chen, traveled to St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana, and found a place where a people and their history were nearly washed away. Just beyond a blind pass at the edge of Lake Bourne lies a history nearly lost in these brackish waters. As unlikely as it might seem, this remote cove is where Asian America began, Bayou St. Malo, Louisiana. Why is St. Malo important? It's important as a site of, you know, the first Filipino-American settlement in the United States. We think about the beginning of Filipino-American history, Asian-American history. This right, is where it begins. Right in the swamps of Louisiana, right, right in the marsh here. Don't feel badly if you've never heard of St. Mallow. Randy Gonzalez hadn't either. And he's a Filipino-American from New Orleans, just 40 minutes away. The history books barely mention the Crescent City was a major world port beginning in the 1700s drawing Filipinos and other seafarers from Spanish colonies. An 1883 article provides what little is known about the early days of St. Malo. It begins, For nearly 50 years there has existed in the southeastern swamplands of Louisiana a certain strange settlement of Malay fishermen, Tagalas, from the Philippine Islands. They say when you entered the bayou, you wouldn't see the houses yet. But when you turn to Ben, Suddenly, you'd see rows of houses for a mile, you know, you'd you went down. House after house. House after house, just kind of stretching down the bayou. And when you say village, describe it to me. It's a bunch of uh, palmetto-covered huts. They were put on stilts, and they also, you know, had these kind of hat-shaped eaves, which were kind of familiar to the, to the Philippines. Also familiar, fishing in the shallow waters. The shrimp dance to peel crustaceans from their shells. Traditions and language brought from home, but with challenges that were familiar too. What happened to this community? Storms, right? The storms would destroy it, uh, you know, every 10 years probably. It wasn't worth it to live there anymore. The final blow was the 1893 hurricane. The October storm wiped out St. Malo, which at its peak included 150 Filipinos, mostly men. Manila Village and smaller fish camps also dotted the bayou, but in time, all were washed away. These were the first climate refugees. It was always a place that was in peril, always. They could still make a living, but the trauma of going through those storms, some people just will end up giving up. There's a certain amount of resilience that everyone has to have to live out there, but at some point it's like, no, it's not worth it anymore. Many descendants scattered. Today, Louisiana has one of the smaller Filipino populations in the U.S. But old favorites are drawing a new generation back. What's in the dough? So it's just uh, rice flour, evaporated milk, coconut flakes. Jessica Bayuga knows the power her bunuelos and other family recipes have to draw Filipinos close. That's how I met my husband. And um, how I met, how I still meet most Filipinos, because they, they look for the food. <laughs> There's new, younger Filipinos, chefs cooking their mother's food or their grandmother's food, opening up their wounds and wanting to share their grandmother's cooking or, um, and then tell us about it and tell us their stories. Today, St. Malo's story rests on higher and drier ground at the Isleños Museum that honors the early Canary Islanders who came here too. Both groups determined to save the stories of their communities. It's that part of, of our American history that's not documented in the newspapers, not documented by the government or the storytellers, but documented at the kitchen table. 
you know, out on the pier gutting some ducks or, you know, fish or whatever they're doing. Like those stories that get shared in those moments, I think, are really part of the fabric of communities. And the thread that can save history from time and tide. For Matter of Fact, I'm Joey Chen in Bayou St. Malo.